Here is Dr. Saeed. Thank you, Poonam, founder of the uh, Government Technology Foundation, uh, distinguished uh, elected representatives, ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon and a warm welcome to you in this unique event. I thank the organizers, first of all, for inviting me here and providing me with this unique opportunity to share my thoughts with you. At the outset, the young lady who was here, young still in the Indian context, uh, and her team deserve full appreciation for, first of all, coming up with this great idea of a technology forum which would serve as an interface between industry and the government and a platform for exchange of smart ideas and solutions for efficient management of enterprises, enhancing productivity, reducing costs, and creation of jobs. I recall the one quotation of former president of India and acclaimed nuclear scientist, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who had once said, learning gives creativity. Creativity leads to thinking. Thinking provides knowledge. Knowledge makes you great. Since we have a large number of uh, uh, American audience here, I would just like to also transport you a little bit uh, back in time in India so that you understand how the modern India evolved so I would just take two to three minutes, as the, my previous speakers have taken above the allocated time. Uh, India has an, a long history of scientific and technological innovations dating back to ancient times. And most of you must be aware of the enormous work done in the field of mathematics, astronomy, metallurgy, medicine, and metrology. So if you ask me one question, what is the biggest contribution of India to the world? I would perhaps say zero. I mean the number zero, which you are very well aware of. The Hindu numerical system, the decimal place value, all the precursor of the Arabic numeral system, these are the contributions in mathematics. And if you talk about astronomy, one of the leading astronomists of India, Aryabhata, was the first to state that the Earth moves around the sun and that the eclipses are caused by the shadow of Earth falling on the moon. And you would be surprised that in the field of medicine too, Complex surgeries like plastic surgery was being carried out in India as early as 2000 BC. And contact cataract surgery was also known in the 6th century BC. So, and also in the field of education, we are aware of modern uh, educational institutions. IIT uh, uh, is, is one of the pioneers of this forum. But then if you go back and look in, in history, India was the home perhaps to the world's first university, which was Taxila, established in 700 BC where more than 10,000 students studied 60 different subjects. And similarly, India was also a pioneer in the world's first republic, which was Vaisali in the modern Bihar. Then the question comes, if India was the land of innovation and technology, even thousands of years ago, then how come a perce perception existed, particularly in the West, that India is the land of snake charmers? The Prime Minister of India, Honorable Sri Narendra Modi ji, during his address at the Madison Square Garden in New York last September, alluded to this very uh, misperception on this, by saying that India was, there was a time when India was regarded as a land of snake charmers, but it has since changed thanks to the young Indians who have excelled in technology and helped in changing the image of India in the world. When we talk about modern India, we mean a nation, a young nation, whose 50% of the population is below the age of 25, and more than 65 of its population is below the age of 35. This translates into 540 young Indians under the age of 25. That means today every third person in India is a youth. So according to an estimate of Morgan Stanley Research, India is expected to be the largest supplier of university graduates in the world by 2020, which would be roughly about 115 million. These young Indians are dynamic, technology savvy, ready to experiment and kindle their minds. No wonder we are noticing a technological digital revolution in India. In 2001, for instance, there were only about 7 million internet users in India. This number is expected to cross 550 million 
by 2018, making Indians the second largest online community in the world, according to one uh, one research. Today, the number of in internet users in India are about 300 million, and every six months, we are adding 50 million more internet users in India. Surprisingly, many rural uh, members, many rural community members are also joining the internet revolution, and it is expected that the current number of rural people, internet users, would go from 60 million to around 280 million. Also in India, those who have been to India recently, you would find extraordinary use of mobile internet, extraordinary use of mobile phones, even you would find that vegetable vendors, you would find uh, maybe fishermen or risha pullers, everybody has, has evolved into a digitally literate person. India is now the third largest country in the world to have five internet companies valued over US dollars, one billion. India constitutes the second largest market in the world for Facebook and uh, LinkedIn. Now this is where the, um, now when we talk about all this, but when you talk about the actual penetration of internet in terms of the size of the population, it's only less than 20% uh, when compared to China, which is 50% and Brazil, which is 61%. That is where the role of the government comes in, in promoting the use of technology and e-governance. And uh, I would like, just like to mention about uh, one uh, recent uh, initiative of the new government, which is the Digital India. And this was launched as part of the government's uh, national e-governance plan. So what is Digital India then? It's an umbrella program involving multiple agencies and is aimed at transforming India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. Focus is to make technology central to enabling change. So when, when we talk about digital India, it is centered around three key areas. One is the digital infrastructure as a utility to every citizen, governance and service of on demands, and digital empowerment to citizens. One such thing which I would like to mention is the uh, is the proposal to have a cradle to grave digital identity. That means the same identity for a person who is born and until he dies in terms of his uh, identity and the, and the use of uh, services involving uh, seamless integration in real time using online platforms, mobile platforms and so on and so forth. The, the entire uh, uh, impact of digital India, what we anticipate by 2019 is to have broadband connectivity in about 250,000 villages, 400,000 public internet accesses, 250,000 schools would get Wi-Fi, all universities would get Wi-Fi, and uh, we aim at digital inclusion of uh, 17 million people, job creation for 17 million people directly, and at least 8.5 million people indirectly, and no imports whatsoever of anything relating to digital technology. And uh, to promote the e-governance and the use of technology, the government has also come up with several initiatives, awards, uh, encouraging young youngsters, for instance. Uh, the awards, such as National E-Governance Awards, we identify the states, we identify the uh, agencies, uh, and then bestow with them these encouraging awards. The National Innovation Foundation of India, which is an autonomous body of the Department of Science and Technology, uh, also works at grassroots levels to, uh, to promote outstanding knowledge holders, especially in, from the unorganized sector. Ministry of uh, Science and Technology has also come up with Inspire Awards for young students, basically to encourage talent when they are while still in the school. So there are several initiatives which are being taken. This is the time for you to look at India. When you will just talk about the major initiatives, one you would see the smart cities, which is again an offshoot of the uh, discussions in forums like this. Then we have uh, the Ganga rejuvenation, that is the uh, cleaning of the Ganga waters. Then we have the Make in India campaign. So I feel that this is no better time for the business community and the innovators to look at India. I would conclude my brief remarks uh, with this and with, with the hope that the discussions and ideas that would emanate in today's forum would go a long way in providing a new direction uh, to both the private and public sectors in adopting what we would term as today the technology for growth and development. Thank you very much and I wish GTS a very, very Thank successful you. event this afternoon.
person to connect to. Would like to appreciate your time to come and share that. So um, Thank you.